welcome to It's an Inside Job Bite Size Fridays, your weekly dose of resilience, optimism, and well being to get you ready for the weekend. Now, each week, I'll bring you insightful tips and uplifting stories to help you navigate life's challenges and embrace a more positive mindset. And so, with that said, let's slip into the stream. Hey folks, welcome back to another Bite Size Friday episode. This week, I'm going to highlight a segment from an archived conversation from Season 5, Episode 18, where I sat down with Dr. Dana Sinclair, a performance psychologist with an impressive background and a diverse range of clients. Now, in this particular segment, Dr. Sinclair delves into the practical side of performance psychology. She shares her insights on how to manage high-pressure situations by focusing on task-related actions actions, rather than being consumed by emotions like anxiety or self-doubt. Now, Dr. St. Clair also discusses the importance of self-evaluation after any performance, offering a straightforward approach to identifying what went well and where improvements can be made. This segment is packed with actionable advice, including how to use visualization and mental rehearsals to prepare for challenging situations. Dr. Sinclair's approach is all about helping you to be better equipped mentally and emotionally when it counts the most. So now let's slip into the stream and hear from Dr. Dana Sinclair. I think the easiest way is to pick a, an event, a performance, something that is important to you. And it could be a meeting or an interview or an interaction. And think about, hey, on my good days when I am doing a really good job and I'm feeling good and I'm behaving well and I'm on task. What am I, what am I thinking? What am I doing? What am I saying to myself? Okay. And then conversely, then go to, okay, when I I didn't do a good job at all, when it was not happening for me, when I was unhappy with my performance, again, what was I doing? What was I thinking? What was I saying to myself? So that's an easy way to really get into what you are actually thinking and saying to yourself before the performance and during Mm -hmm. easiest way. And I, you know, some people will, will balk at first and say, Oh, well, I don't know. But if you leave them for a minute and say, you know, were you thinking good things? Were you telling yourself that you had done it before and that you're actually good at this because you're ranked or then they're like, oh yeah, okay. Then they relax and they they can actually articulate it and write it down. Since we're just riffing on talk, uh, uh, narrative and self-talk mm-hmm. and such, you mentioned uh, one of the four really great skills at the back of the book, not the back of the book, the full four last chapters. Yep. Um, you talked about smart talk. I was wondering if you could explain what smart talk is and how our listeners can use it in their day to day. Yes. Smart talk is really self-talk. I break self-talk down into two components. One, you've got facts and two, you've got smart talk. I'll talk about facts first. Um, because once you've got your facts and you've got your smart talk, then you're ready to talk your way through those pressure moments. I want people to be able to bring themselves through cognitively by talking to themselves, as opposed to not just thinking, oh, automatically, I've thought this before, it's going to happen. Nope. I want you to actually talk yourself through those moments. It's like the kayaker, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, an NFL quarterback, he's going to talk his way through his progressions and where he's got to, where he's got to pass the ball as well. You don't just let it happen. You've got to be able to think in the moment, which is another concept we can talk about later because people think you shouldn't, but I think you should. Anyway, back to the facts. I want people to have a list of their accomplishments, great feedback they've received, whether it's, you know, accomplishments, trophies, marks, um, winning something, doing well at something, good uh, performance reviews. I want a list of those things because that often allows people to sit back and go, oh, mm-hmm. I'm not so bad. Because it's amazing when you ask someone, hey, what are, your, what are some fun facts about you? What have you done well at? What are you good at? And a lot of people will automatically say, I don't know or nothing. And if you, again, probe them a little or let them sit, then we get the list, you know? So I like people having bullet points 
of their accomplishments because those are facts, even when they're cranky and upset, they can't take away from themselves. Those are facts. They can't refute those. And I love people to sit on their facts and pay attention to their facts much more than, than they currently do. I push the facts list. What do you think about that? I, I think the facts is, you know, when I, when I'm talking to clients, you know, sometimes I, I can't remember who said it, but they said the past is experience. The present is an experiment and the, uh, the future is an expectation. And so what, what I, I use different vernacular, but I say, you know, you can look over your shoulder from the trailhead to where you are now. That's your past. Nobody can take that. No one can strip that from you, Dana, the hurdles that you've overcome, the pitfalls you've climbed out of the, the hills and the valleys that you've hiked. That is fact. Nobody can take that. That's your experience. And this is one way for me to create self-compassion, right? Whether you flopped or you succeeded, you know, both of them require some sense of resilience. But when you said, what do I think about that? For me, it resonates like a hundred percent because the past is experience. No one can do that. But then we can take that past experience. As you're saying, reframe it, take those three or four bullet points, as you said, right now, the conversation between you and I, Dana, is an experiment. And that right. experiment, we can play with ideas. You as the sports, uh, sort of the performance psychologist talking yeah. to me, you can reframe me. So my expectation is one, not, not, not super positive, but I'm going right. into a difficult situation, but it can be constructive. So for me, it completely resonates what you're saying. Right. Because I think probably both of us in our work, we don't want people, certainly when it's time to perform, jumping into that future. We want them right here, right now in the moment. And to do a good job there, you can pull in that experience and those facts. You can set yourself up to be a little calmer, to be ready to stay focused right now instead of somewhere else. And yeah, those facts, they set you up for it. And I think what you're saying that when you're about, about the future, right. And I think that's the fine line between speculation and, um, uh, strategy speculation is like just guessing, you know, worst case scenarios, crossing the bridge and then thinking, what are the consequences? Right. But buddy, you don't even know if the bridge is there, but strategy, <laughs> you can still think about negative outcomes, but you can have sure. a strategic play as you, I'm assuming that's what we're talking about here. Yes. Right. Yeah, exactly. Be, be, you do have to think about negative outcomes if you're trying to plan things. You know, I'm thinking of a, a, a team owner and big, big CEO who constantly thinks about failure, constantly thinks about, you know, what could happen, what's the next move. Now, he's always got, he's always got you know, how to make that right or how to get by that. But thinking about the negative on its own isn't helpful, but thinking about what you're going to do about it, now we're talking got to have a plan. Mm. Got to know what to do when you hit those roadblocks, when you hit those barriers, whether they're psychological barriers or physical barriers or whatever other kind of barriers there are. And so, so would that be the other side? You said uh, smart talk is sort of yes. a coin. One side is the facts, listing the facts, the bullet points. And the other side, would that be yes. the second smart. side of the coin? Yes. I like that analogy. Okay. Good. So, right. So once you've got your facts and you can calm down a little, now it's like, oh, what do I actually say to myself that is in the way? And I, I, I do think it's good to um, have people write down, well, I usually say this and I usually say that. I'm, I'm really good in these situations. I've done this well before. Um, I am really good when the pressure is on, when I'm talking to my boss, I stay calm and, and clear and focused, those types of things. But what inevitably comes out with those are people go to the negative and I love them to identify the negative things they say to themselves. I can't do this. What's going to happen? I'm going to blow it. Did I blow it last? Last time they're going to think I'm stupid. All of those things. Now let's have a look. Say there's six of those negative statements sure. that they say all the time because it's default. They just go back to those because they're comfortable with them. And now we look at them and say, okay, uh, you know, you might call yourself an idiot, but do you really? Does that really bother you? Do you just really mean that? You probably don't really mean that. Or just go through those and figure out what really does get in the way. What really does bother you? Because there's a bunch of throwaway negative comments, but identify the two or three that. Oh, when I'm saying that, I really feel the tension and the concern. Now we've got to reframe those. 
So it's a lot easier to either jettison them and substitute something else in there that's actually more constructive, productive, real, mm-hmm. or twist it. Well, I am going to play badly if I don't calm down and stay focused on X. Mm-hmm. See, that's a good way to do it too. So you can you can absorb the negative. Well, I am I, I don't want to I don't want to lose. I don't want to mess up. Okay, well then I guess I better do something different here. Mm-hmm. Better calm down, pay attention to what I'm supposed to be saying in my slideshow, you know, stay on task. Anything like that. It's very helpful. Yeah, it is reappraisal, right? It's giving new meaning to the situation. It is re-engineering the narrative we say ourselves, so it's serving us, not serving against us. But not yeah. making it up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It has to be based on the first part you said where it's factual. And then what I hear is that you take statements based on those facts, whatever you've achieved. And yes, such. it can be statements based on those facts. They can be totally two separate things. Okay. You can just hit your facts oh. and then in the moment or uh, working your way towards the event, just remind yourself, hey, come on now, you know, mm-hmm. Because you're going to get, you're going to drift back into those negative thoughts Hmm. and you need to be able to handle those negatives when they hit you in the moment so they don't keep you stuck. So it's like, oh gosh, I I really don't want to blow this. I'm afraid I'm going to blow this. Well, you know what? Hush up. Because if you don't breathe a little bit and remind yourself that you've done this 18,000 times before, you are going to blow. So come on, let's get at it. Let's go. One of the ideas I, I, I wrote beside the smart talk was third person. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, like if you start to like Jason did this, Jason did that. And it, you almost dissociate a little from the events <laughs> and you see yourself from more of an objective perspective and you don't get so lost in a subjective storm. And I thought that was that, that was just something my brain kind of riffed off hmm. what you wrote. And I thought, OK, maybe that that's a, also a good idea sometimes to distance yourself by using your name instead of me and I pronouns. Yes. And uh, that's a good thing to discuss because I've not found a consensus with my clients anyway, as to what's best or or what works Mm -hmm. best. Everybody has their own way. And sometimes, I mean, I'll go back. I use self-talk a lot. I will go back and forth between talking to myself, my name, using my name and then just saying me, come on, Mm -hmm. I, Like, I've got to do this. Let's go. Come on, Dana, smarten up. Whatever it is that I need to be doing or uh, I go back and forth depending on the day or how I feel. Very true. Very true. It's very situational is what I hear you're saying. Yes. Or just based on your performance style, your, your, your character, your, Mm. you know, your behaviors, your natural behaviors. And that that kind of segues into, at least my segues into my head is that, you know, when we talk about. Uh, self-talk and smart talk and negative talk and such and rumination, all that, that leads to a concept. And I, again, I thought your chapter on confidence was mm-hmm. very interesting. I was wondering if you could talk about the misconception of confidence, because a lot of people think if you have the confidence, you can do it. But your book is a little counterintuitive in the way, and it really resonated with me again, the way you've talked about it. Confidence is overrated. Again, with all the high performers I work with, the one of the big myths about performing with success is that you have to be confident. And I say, no, you don't. You might want it, but you don't need it. Confidence is one of those things that is variable. It's vague. It's intangible. I mean, if we all think about our own confidence levels, We all know intuitively that it can be with us one day and not the next. It can flip on us from hour to hour, even minute to minute or within an event. It is not a reliable strategy to perform well. Mm -hmm. And I would like to bust this myth out there about confidence because it doesn't work. (laughs) It's great if you feel it. I'm not against confidence, of course, Having confidence is a great start because it helps relax you. It helps you feel, okay, I can do it, step one. But you can be really confident and still blow the performance because you're not on task. Just because you feel good doesn't mean you're going to stay focused. It's all about what to do, not about how you feel. 
And confidence is about how you feel. Performing well is about what you do. So I don't like people to get caught up in performance or sorry, in, in confidence when they're trying to perform because it is a problem even for the high performers. So I get, I try to get away from it. And so what would you characterize it? Is, is it more sort of self-efficacy then focusing on actions more than yes. feelings? Absolutely. In the moment, mm. you've got to go to actions. We don't have time necessarily, especially, you know, if, a, if it's a short performance or an event, you don't have time to examine your feelings. You've got to get right to the do. You've got to do the do in the moment. If you want more, why not go back and listen to the original full conversation with my guest? You will find the link in the episode in the show notes. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I'll be back next week with my long-form conversational episodes on Monday and the latest Bite Sides episode on Friday. And have yourself a relaxing and rejuvenating weekend.